Hello everyone, welcome back to Combat Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Let us continue with acute diarrheal diseases. And today we shall talk about diarrheal disease control program, which can be either short term by appropriate clinical management or it can be long term, which include better MCH care practices, preventive strategies and preventing diarrheal epidemics. In today's video, we shall talk about the appropriate clinical management. Diarrhea can be classified uh, differently. For example, based on the level of dehydration, we can have severe dehydration, some dehydration and no dehydration. We can also have severe persistent diarrhea or persistent diarrhea and we can have severe dysentery and dysentery. Now, there are a lot of textbooks that I have seen which mentions the classification of dehydration as mild dehydration, moderate dehydration and severe dehydration. But remember, this is a wrong classification because the right classification or the correct classification will be no dehydration, some dehydration and severe dehydration. So this is not mild, moderate or severe. Remember, this is no, some and severe dehydration. So this is the correct classification. Now we have already established in our previous video that diarrhea is considered as one of the leading causes of under 5 mortality. So all the clinical management of diarrheal case that we shall discuss today is specially for the under 5 children. Severe dehydration. If any two of the following signs are present then it is classified as severe dehydration so the child may be lethargic or unconscious there may be sunken eyes or the skin pinch may go back very slowly ideally the skin pinch after releasing uh, goes back immediately but if it takes more than two seconds then we say that skin pinch goes back very slowly so very slowly means more than two seconds or in case of older children that is two months to five years if the child is not able to drink or drinking poorly. If you remember from my previous video on ARI, we learned that we can classify the illness in under 5 children according to the IMNCI guideline uh, which is done based on the age group of the child. So we had two age groups, 0 to 2 months which is considered as young infants and then we had 2 months to 5 years of age group. So here also the, uh, the classification of dehydration in diarrhea and their management is done based on the age group of the child. What about the management in case of severe dehydration? So in either case, if there is low body weight or there is severe classification, again, which we discussed in the video on ARI, we have to refer the child immediately to the hospital and on the way the child is to be given frequent sips of ORS to prevent further dehydration. Uh, the child should be uh, breastfed continuously and also the child should be kept warm uh, so as to prevent any hypothermia. But if there is no severe classification then we can initiate plan C. What is plan C? Plan C is for severe dehydration and we shall discuss plan C in details next. Remember in case of older children that is 2 months to 5 years uh, the diarrheal episode may be because of cholera and the drug of choice for cholera is doxycycline. So in that case if there is uh, presence of cholera cases in the given area then uh, we can also give doxycycline to the child for cholera. Okay, Coming to plan C which is to treat severe dehydration. Plan C is basically intravenous fluid therapy. Now, lot of things are written here. You can uh, pause the video and read everything if you need. But uh, the most important part, uh, especially for the undergraduate student, is the first box here. So I shall discuss this part in details. So as I already mentioned, uh, 
in plan C we go for intravenous fluid therapy. First question is what is the fluid of choice? Ideally ringal lactate is to be given. If ringal lactate or RL is not available then we can also go for NS that is normal saline. Then next question is how much fluid is to be given? The total amount of fluid is 100 ml per kg. So whatever is the uh, weight of the child in kilogram we have to multiply it with 100 and that amount in ml is the total amount of fluid which is given in plan C. Now if the age, age of the child is less than 12 months then first 30 ml per kg of this 100 ml per kg is given in a duration of 1 hour and the rest of the 70 ml per kg is given in the next 5 hours. So we have 1 hour here and then 5 hour and then after 6 hours we have to assess the infant. In case of older children that is in between 1 year to 5 years the first 30 ml per kg is given in 30 minutes and the next 70 ml per kg is given in next 2 and half hours. So exactly the half of the amount in time. And of course here also after two and half and half that means three hours we have to reassess the child ideally if uh, if you see that after one hour here or after 30 minutes here the child uh, has very weak or stable uh, undetectable pulse then we have to continue this dosage again that means uh, let me repeat here so after one hour of giving 30 ml per kg to this child we assess the pulse radial pulse if it is still very weak or if it is not detectable then again we give 30 ml per kg for next one hour similarly in case of 12 months to 5 years uh, we give 30 ml per kg in the next 30 minutes also all right and uh, after six hours in case of uh, infants or after three hours in case of 12 months to five years when we reassess the child we see whether the child is still in severe dehydration stage or maybe in the uh, some dehydration or no dehydration stage according to that we have to decide whether we shall continue with plan c or we have to go for plan b and plan a all right so this is the uh, main thing about intravenous therapy we have to know which fluid is to be given, how much is to be given and what is the duration. So this table is very important. Rest of the part as I mentioned earlier you can pause the video here and go through the things. Coming to some dehydration. Again any two of the following signs if present then it is some dehydration. The child may be restless or irritable, sunken eyes may be present and skin pinch goes back slowly. So notice here we have skin pinch going back slowly, not very slowly. Very slowly means more than two seconds. What is slowly? Slowly means it does not go back immediately, but it does not take as long as two seconds. Or in case of two months to five years old children, if the child drinks eagerly or if it is thirsty, then also it is considered. For management, Again, the same thing. If the child has low weight or any severe classification, then the child has to be referred to the hospital. On the way, it is given sips of ORS, uh, hypothermia is prevented, and breastfeeding is to be continued, etc., etc. But if there is no uh, severe classification, if the body weight is normal, then we go for what is known as Plan B. So, Plan B. Uh, or in case of older children, that is two months to five years, we also have to give zinc supplement. We shall talk about zinc and we shall talk about ORS in details in our next video, not in today's video. So let us discuss plan B in details. What is plan B? Plan B is oral rehydration therapy. So in case of plan C, we are giving intravenous therapy. Here we are giving oral therapy. So we are try to, trying to rehydrate the child with ORS, oral rehydration solution. How much ORS is to be given? So for the first four hours, this is very important. For the first four hours, how much ORS is to be given can be decided based on the age of the child or the body weight of the child. So if we can remember this table, then uh, we can know how much ORS is to be given for the first four hours. Alternatively, 
uh, I tell my students to remember that the amount of ORS given in first four hours is 70 ml. I am sorry, 75 ml per kg body weight. So here it is uh, mentioned 75 ml per kg body weight. And uh, if the child wants more ORS, that means it is uh, the child is eager to take more ORS, then of course we can give more ORS. If the child is less than six months but uh, it is not breastfed, then we can give additional 100 to 200 ml of clean drinking water. The mother must be taught uh, how to give ORS, uh, but before that, she must be taught how to prepare ORS. Again, in our next video, we shall talk about ORS in details. After four hours of giving ORS, we classify the child and uh, based on the level of dehydration, we decide whether we have to go to plan A, stick with plan B or maybe go to plan C. Next is no dehydration. So if not enough signs to classify as some or severe dehydration are present, then we have to classify it as no dehydration. Management, we give oral fluid uh, to treat diarrhea at home. So plan A is given here. Remember, plan A is given for no dehydration. Plan B for some dehydration and plan C for severe dehydration. In case of older children, we can give zinc. So what about plan A? So we have to give extra fluid. We have to tell the mother if the child is exclusively breastfed, then breastfeeding is to be continued more frequently and for longer duration for each feed. If the age of the child is less than six months, we can give ORS and clean water in addition to breast milk. If the age of the child is six months or above, then home fluids in addition to breast milk can be given. Or if the child is not exclusively breastfed, then uh, we can give ORS solution, yogurt milk, milk, lemon drink, rice or pulses based drinks, vegetable soup, green coconut water, plain clean water, etc. These are all known as HAF that is home available fluid. And uh, uh, ideally, how much fluid is to be given up to two years? 50 to 100 ml of fluid to be given after each loose stool and if the age of the child is between 2 years to 5, five years uh, then 100 to 200 ml after each loose stool and of course we have to see that we are not over hydrating the child uh, which in, in, in that case we have to stop giving any kind of fluid again this part will be discussed in our next video. So this is all about plan A. Next part is persistent diarrhea. Persistent diarrhea means diarrhea lasting for two weeks or more. So 14 days or more. In children between zero to two months, we give the first dose of intramuscular ampicillin and gentamicin. Uh, if the young infant has low weight or dehydration or another severe classification, uh, we have to look for hypoglycemia we have to prevent hypothermia and the child is referred to the hospital remember that persistent diarrhea in less than two months is considered as severe persistent diarrhea and that is why this child has to be referred to the hospital in case of older children that is two months to five years if there is dehydration present along with persistent diarrhea then it is considered as severe persistent diarrhea and same thing the child has to be referred to the hospital if along with persistent diarrhea there is no dehydration then it is considered as only persistent diarrhea and uh, what we do is the mother is advised on feeding uh, single dose of vitamin a is given gene supplementation is given so the child can be managed at home next is dysentery dysentery means blood in stool in case of 0 to 2 months, this is considered as severe dysentery and same thing we have to refer the child to the hospital and before that the first dose of intramuscular antibiotic either ampicillin or gentamicin is given. In case of older children, we give 
the child three days of ciprofloxacin and dehydration has to be treated what is this to be given along with gypsum preparation and the child is to be followed up after two days so this is all about the management of diarrhea having no dehydration some dehydration and severe dehydration also if there is persistent diarrhea or dysentery now when to follow up that is also very important in case of young infants that is 0 to 2 months if the child has diarrhea after 2 days the mother is asked if the diarrhea has stopped if the diarrhea still persists then we have to assess the young infant for diarrhea and then classify it if the diarrhea has stopped then reinforce the exclusive breastfeeding now in case of older children that is 2 months to 5 years the child is to return after two days uh, in case of dysentery or after five days in case of diarrhea that is not improving or persistent diarrhea so in case of diarrhea after five days we ask the same thing whether the diarrhea has stopped and how many loose tools the child is passing per day if the diarrhea still persists we have to assess and classify and based on that we have to start plan a plan b plan c whatever is required and if the diary has stopped then we have to tell the mother to follow the usual feeding recommendation as per the age of the child persistent diarrhea the child will return after five days and same thing we have to ask whether the diarrhea has stopped and how many loose tools are uh, being passed every day and the same recommendations are done here in case of dysentery after two days the child returns and we have to uh, assess and classify uh, and ask the mother if there are fewer stools if there is less blood in the stool if there is less fever less abdominal pain and if the child is eating better if there is dehydration present we have to treat the dehydration based on plan b or plan c whatever is required <coughs> If there is fever stool or less blood in the stool, less fever, less abdominal pain and the child is eating better, then continue giving the same antibiotic until finished. So the course has to be completed. And if the number of stools, amount of blood in stools, fever, abdominal pain or eating is the same or worse, then uh, the child has not improved at all and the child has to be referred to the hospital. So now we know when the mother should return with the child. Uh, and what is to be advised to the mother uh, when she returns so the follow-up recommendations so with this we conclude today's session we discussed very important things today uh, the classification and management of diarrhea with no dehydration some dehydration and severe dehydration persistent diarrhea dysentery etc and also about the follow-up visit and the recommendation during the follow-up visit uh, if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates and juniors and friends we also have our facebook page you can follow the facebook page and the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video